let these people know quickly whether they have to split a few more hairs to get it right. Others learned all about the fine art of balancing. That plastic shield was developed to protect the balanced blade from air currents in the factory. Any error in the weight of these blades is multiplied nearly 2,000 times in flight. And these people have been taught that any error on this front is failure on this front. Failure of a mission, loss of American lives. While all those people were learning about making blades, others found out that propellers have more than blades. They have such queer sounding parts as barrels and spiders, the sturdy parts that hold the blades in position. They've got to be sturdy, for in flight, each blade tries to tear itself away from its hub with a force equal to the weight of a loaded freight car. Yes, there was a lot to learn in the barrel and spider departments, including hundreds of different checks and double checks. There are over 1,400 parts that had to be made and brought together and skillfully assembled. You're right, nobody has to learn to put all 1,400 parts together. Each has his own job, and he knows that job almost well enough to do it blindfolded. That's the way it is in a big war plant. You've learned your job, and you're proud of it. But what a stranger you'd be if you worked on propellers and walked into the machine gun plant. These people know their jobs, just as you know yours. But they'd have to go into training to learn how to build propellers. All the jobs are different, yes, but they have a lot in common. For most of the jobs are precision jobs. Just as propellers have to measure and balance just so, this machine gun bolt must be machined to extreme accuracy. The reason lies in the gun itself, the Browning Caliber 50. This gun is the standard weapon of the Air Forces. It fires over 800 rounds a minute, blasting each bullet toward its target at a speed of more than half a mile a second. It takes 200 parts to make up this gun. Each moving part must slide past its neighbor with such smoothness and sureness that there will be the least amount of friction, the least possibility of jamming, the least vibration to interfere with the gunner's accurate aim. In addition, parts must be identical in measurement so that any one of thousands of parts will fit any one of thousands of guns. Like peas in a pod is too loose a description for the similarity of these parts. They are literally factory-made identical twins. Precision tools, precise ways of thinking about their jobs, that was the way the peacetime employees of the factory had to think, so precision was no stranger to them. The new ones learned quickly under skillful training. This is the Browning 50 caliber in quantity production, something unknown until this war, when production men let loose their talents on a problem which had been largely a hand production operation. Many changes in production thinking were suggested and accepted and the total score of all the new ideas has been a revolution in machine gun manufacture. Modern manufacturing methods have increased the firing rate of the gun, saved raw stock for other vital war uses, replaced critical materials with non-critical materials, and resulted in production at five times the original schedule in improved quality with only twice as many machines and people and at less than one-fourth the original cost. Here is a good example of new thinking applied to an old problem, preparing guns for shipment to the fighting fronts. These machine guns must be shipped to our fighting men all over the world. Temperature and climatic conditions from the heat of the tropics to the frigid north, from desert sand to corrosive salt water, Guns must be protected against all these elements of nature. Soldiers in the last war can well remember this scene. Guns packed in thick, heavy grease to provide the needed protection. Eight hours of slow, tedious cleaning. 
They don't do it that way in this factory. They seal each gun in a series of transparent, moisture-proof wrappings, like fine food being delivered to your home. Special drying material sealed inside provides a whole year's protection against the elements. In any part of the world, these guns can go immediately into action. This is typical of the contributions of American industry in supplying American fighters with the best of fighting equipment. In this case, the result of a manufacturer with specialized knowledge of moisture control, applying it to improve the effectiveness of a fighting weapon. New thinking, a new solution to an old problem, important in war, and opening up new peacetime possibilities in packaging. It is not hard seeing these factories to understand the result of the new thinking and of all the effort. One machine gun taking its place on one plane. All these guns equipping a giant sky fleet of thousands of planes thundering out over enemy territory. Can look at one propeller and see an American fighter plane climbing for advantage over an enemy. You can see all these propellers and figure the bombing force they can pull over enemy ground. Staggering winged armadas, including the mighty super fortress, the B-29. But there is a hidden meaning to the whole story. Here, in the ability of American industry, in the ability of these people, of all the people in American industry, to meet and conquer a challenging new problem is the secret weapon the enemy did not expect. Yes, and it's only in times of a great crisis that we ourselves fully realize that with our modern convenient way of life, we have the imagination that meets change with change the hard fiber that matches effort with effort, the courage to put our real resources to work. That is our secret weapon. It's ours for use in war, for use in peace.